What's the fastest way you've seen someone ruin their life for good? Story 1. A former acquaintance was playing around with a homemade crossbow that I'd helped him with. I was massively into archery and fletching, and he seemed serious about it. I typically made him leave it with me because, deadly weapon, I have an explanation he kind of didn't. Anyway, to convince his parents to let him join an archery club, he wanted to show off the crossbow we made. I thought it was a decent plan, so let him take it without any ammo. Turns out he was gaming me to get more playtime with his favorite toy, had gotten hold of some bolts, and was freaking around, shooting his shed a fair bit. He somehow ended up firing a bolt that missed the shed completely, passed between the slats on his fence, and hit his neighbor's daughter in the spine. She hasn't walked since. He got fricked up real bad by her unstable older brother. They both did jail time, acquaintance, was disowned, and ended up homeless. And now I'm not sure where they are in life. Edit. I've had a few people comment that even a stable person would want to frick up someone for something like this. Truth told, I half agree. I still feel like it's important information to the situation, however, and just want to clarify the statement. The beating that he got was brutal, involved a crowbar, and left him with a broken femur. The difference between wanting to do something like that and actually acting on it is important. Also, we were 18 at the time, the girl was 12, her brother 21, for all those asking. Story 2. When I was in college in the early 2000s, a sophomore drove his car into a bunch of kids out partying on a Saturday, a block and a half from where I was living. He was going 60 to 70 miles per hour, swiping cars parked on the side of the road before he hit the crowd. I think four people died. He got out screaming nonsense before being tackled, was on a handful of drugs. Last thing I heard, he was in a mental facility. Yeah, it's terrifying to think about the potential consequences of drug use and the impact it can have on individuals and those around them. Hopefully, this serves as a reminder to always be aware of our actions and the potential harm they can cause to others. My thoughts go out to the victims and their families. Story 3. In the Air Force, this new guy joins and goes out to a bar, then decides to drive home. Gets a DUI, loses all his rank, has to pay a ton in fines, but leadership fought for him and he was allowed to stay in the Air Force. Two months later, as he's paying tons of lawyer and legal fees, he does something really stupid. Drives home from the same bar drunk and gets arrested. Loses his license and gets kicked out of the military, so he loses all his income while he's thousands of dollars in debt. That's not even the worst part. A few months later, he celebrates being a civilian again by, you guessed it, going to the same bar, then driving home drunk. Arrested and put in jail for a while. I can't imagine he has many future career opportunities with a less than honorable discharge and an arrest record. Story 4. I was there when my older brother tried H for the first time. Fast forward 15 years, and he's constantly going to the hospital for abscesses that appear on his arms and legs, and is almost completely cut off from the rest of the family because he's robbed our parents more than once. Every few years, he swears he's going to kick the habit. The first few times, we collectively ponied up cash to send him to rehab and tried to be as supportive as we could. After the 10th relapse or so, we're too exhausted to even pretend to be hopeful about his newest attempt to get clean. Story 5. About 50 years ago, when my great uncle was in his early 20s, he drove home so drunk that he ran over and killed two college students and didn't even realize it. After his initial incarceration, he didn't know how to function as a free citizen, so he keeps getting himself sent back to jail. For example, he got out of jail around a year ago and couldn't make his first month's rent. His solution was to walk to the convenience store, steal a beer, and sit on the curb waiting for the cops to arrive. Ah, it's just so sad to think about the way his life has spiraled out of control since then and how he seems to keep getting himself into more trouble. It's a grim reminder of the deadly consequences of drunk driving and how one mistake can change so many lives forever. Story 6 Friend got married right after high school and then left for boot camp and deployed soon after. Gave his wife power of attorney. 
She destroyed his credit and put him $200,000 in debt in eight months. They divorced, but his CO advised him to just give her whatever she wants to keep her quiet. So now he's also paying alimony. It sucks because he only joined the military to pay for college, but now he's afraid he won't be able to afford it. Story 7. A few years back, one of the students attending the university I work at got caught trying to sneak a boatload of drugs into a local nightclub. The first we found out about it was when some police officers turned up with a warrant to go through his room, and I was the lucky person chosen to go let them in. So I opened the door, and oh dear lord, there's drugs everywhere. If you've ever seen one of those old-timey pick-and-mix shops with all the sweets and big glass jars, imagine that, but with pills and wraps of powder instead. Everything else was all super neat and tidy, and it was one of the cleanest student rooms I've ever been in, just that every flat surface had a container full of drugs or some other sort of paraphernalia on it. This student was in his fourth year of a master's degree and due to finish in three months. He ended up being charged with possession with intent to supply, and since a lot of the stuff he had in there was Class A, is now going to be in prison for a decade or two. He was also expelled, of course, and will still be on the hook for 60,000 pounds of student debt afterwards. Story 8. This happened to my brother. He's walking home, and his buddy pulls up in a new car and asks if he wants to go for a ride. He gets in, and they pull into the gas station, and the guy said he had to go in and pay. My brother is sitting there when multiple police cars pull in and surround the car, guns drawn. The friend had stolen the car and robbed the gas station and went out the back. It took him 15 minutes. It took months to convince the police he was innocent. And in the meanwhile, he got kicked out of his school, lost all his friends, and gained a lot of weight. I hope that one day he will get back on the right track. Story 9. My college buddy was an affable stoner type who liked psychedelics, funny leafs, and drinking. He was broke, so he got into huffing paint over the summer. He passed out with a plastic bag full of spray paint over his face and ended up depriving his brain of oxygen and is now mentally disabled due to brain damage. Like drooling, slurring, can't tie his own shoes or perform basic life tasks level disabled. A group of boys at my high school did that after school. They huffed, got in a truck, and left school. The driver passed out at the red light and the closest intersection, went through the red light, and hit another car. The driver died, another passenger in his truck was killed, and the driver of the other car he hit was also killed. The three other passengers in the driver's truck also had serious injuries. The other driver was a young mother and the aunt and guardian of another student who had lost his parents earlier in life. It was just so tragically stupid. It's unbelievable that these boys thought huffing was worth risking their lives and the lives of others. My condolences go out to the families of the victims, especially the young mother who was taken too soon. Story 10. Guy from my school went to rob a corner shop at Knife Point. He pulled up with a push bike, went into the store, and threatened the shopkeeper with a knife to give him all the money in the register. The shopkeeper refused, and the robber was too scared to do anything, so he grabbed a pack of gum and ran out. Twenty minutes later, the robber realized he left his bike behind in his panic, so he went back to get it. This was at the same time the police were questioning the shopkeeper on the incident. They swiftly arrested him there, and then, I think he got two years for stealing gum at knife point? Story 11. I was a licensed firearms owner in Canada, and I sold a handful of handguns to my crack dealer when I was still smoking a few years back, and it caught up to me three years after I got sober. I'm going to court for sentencing in a couple of months, with the prosecutor seeking six to eight years. And although it may not seem like that much in the grand scheme of things, but since I quit smoking crack, I got my driver's license, started my own construction business, and I'm in a four-year relationship with an amazing woman who was the reason for my getting sober. All of that is going to be gone, and my grandpa, who's the only family who raised me I have left, will most likely be gone because of him being 84. I'm not sure where you would count the life being ruined, 
The second I made the decision to sell the firearms. Second, the local police pulled me over with 20 cars in morning rush hour. My name being put in the newspaper with my crime. Or when I get sentenced in a few months. Story 12. I had a friend a few years back, always kind of an odd guy, but he had a good heart. Anyway, one day I was hanging out with him and a few other friends, and he told us he was going to get a tattoo tomorrow and had this super cool idea, but he wouldn't tell us what it was because he wanted it to be a surprise. We saw him about a week later. He had tattooed three quarters of his face green, like no design or anything, just solid dark forest green. Basically, he just left the top right corner of his face normal, and the rest was all green. He had been immediately fired from his job the day after getting the tattoo. I kind of lost touch with him shortly after that, since he moved to another city. I'd heard he wound up living in his car. Not sure why he did what he did. He'd had a very good job in IT with a pretty big company and was making decent money. No clue why he thought permanently turning three quarters of his face green would be super awesome. Story 13. Was dating a girl whose little sister got knocked up when she was around 17. Six months pregnant and drinking straight vodka at a family party. I pointed out to my ex-girlfriend's family, and they did nothing. Mother didn't care. She didn't want to smell the bottle of water said it was a lie. Baby mama trapped some guy with the you're the father speech around month eight of pregnancy. I, behind the scenes, paid for a DNA test for him, and it turned out the baby wasn't his. He mentally broke as soon as he heard that. Baby mama didn't care, laughed it off. She was just trying to nail down someone with a job. She has no clue who the father was. Baby was born with bad type of fetal alcohol syndrome. She's 10 now, severely disabled, and grandmother takes care of her. Her mom still does hard drugs and passes out at birthday parties, giving blowing services to guys. Many lives ruined. The one that sticks out the most was the guy who was supposedly the father of that poor little girl. Damn, it's so terrifying that stuff like this actually happens in real life. You really need to pay attention to who you are being with and make sure to stay away from people doing bad stuff. Story 14. In less than five years, one of my cousins was married twice to two equally horrible people and blew through two inheritances. He and his first wife trashed a house my grandmother let them live in for free and got mad when she asked him to pay for repairs. He is now completely alienated from family, including his parents, and disowned. Reply. I'm the guy that had to redo a house that was trashed, and it is disgusting. Some people need to be forced to learn how to clean. Roaches were everywhere. Another reply. If roaches everywhere doesn't force someone to clean, then honestly, I don't think there is any helping them. Story 15. Whew. I heard a lady in an SUV hit a motorcycle waiting in the left turn lane, heard the crunch, and then saw the scene across a large intersection. She was texting, of course, and didn't even see him or slow down. He looked like a pile of rags about 30 feet from his bike, and she hit him so hard that his helmet came off. I don't know how he turned out, but vehicular homicide seems like a likely outcome for her. Yeah, I mean, distracted driving is becoming such a huge problem these days, and it's heartbreaking to hear about incidents like these. I hope the motorcyclist is okay and that the person responsible is held accountable for their actions. Remember, everybody, never text while driving. Story 16. Not me, but my old friend. Story goes like this. He was named John and met his girlfriend Sarah while they were both in college. Sarah had always been driven and ambitious, and she had decided to move overseas to pursue her career. John, being the supportive and loving boyfriend that he was, decided to drop everything and all ambitions in his own life to try and help her pursue hers. John quit school and sold his car to pay for Sarah's move overseas. He even took on a part-time job to help cover their living expenses. He was determined to do whatever it took to make her happy and help her succeed. But despite his efforts, things didn't work out as planned. Sarah cheated on John, and when he found out, he dropped the relationship. By then, the damage was long done. John had dropped out of school and spent every penny he had on Sarah. 
Story 17. Kid from my old school robbed a betting shop with a machete for a measly 200 pounds. His face got caught on CCTV, and he was caught by the feds later that day, hiding in his own garden shed with the money, and went straight to jail. Story 18. I know a few people that have dropped out of high school at ridiculously young ages. Some never even went to high school. All of them have crappy jobs and are just generally miserable. As much of a meme as it is, stay in school. You don't have to do anything extraordinary. Just graduate with the bare minimum. It's really worth it in the long run. Yeah, at the very least, finish high school. It's not like a ton of places are going to hire a 14-year-old, so unless you literally have no other options left to survive, stay in school. Higher education? It depends. I personally wish I had never tried and wasted all those years, and instead went into the job market immediately after high school. Yeah, I plan on pursuing higher education, but I'm not entirely sure about where to go or what to do. I know for a fact that I'm going to finish high school, though. Nowadays, young generations are being told that school is not important, and they're encouraged to drop out to pursue their dreams. Please don't listen to people who tell you not to go to school. School really is very important. Story 19. An acquaintance realized some strange things were going on with her fiancé. Found out her husband discovered gambling and got hardcore addicted very quickly. Maxed out all their loans and credit cards, reopened and maxed out a dormant joint business account from a decade earlier. Story 20. There were a couple of people who my sister went to school with that tried to do drugs. Either they were doing it at school or on school property because they were expelled. This wouldn't be very bad, but it happened around three weeks before they were going to graduate. Apparently, it was bad enough that they were not allowed into any schools in the state, I believe.